Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Let's do a little video here on the Dracaena marginatas. Oh, mine's in it, tucked in here amongst the plants. I may pull it out for a better look here in a bit, but for right now, just look at how pretty it is. This one is one of the varieties that's called Colorama. They have lots and lots of intense variegation inside of their foliage and that's going to vary with the amount of sun that they get. This is a plant where I haven't done a care video on them yet because they're, I don't know, they're just so simple, but I've had enough requests for them over the years that I may as well just do it. So here it is, just a quick rundown on care for Dracaena marginata. The Dracaena marginata, they can grow, I don't know, I think up to 20 feet tall if you're growing them outdoors in the house. I would expect them to stay I don't know, six to 10 feet, prune them as needed. They will go anywhere from part shade to full sun. Indoors, they can go from a medium light all the way up to pretty intense direct light. As far as Dracaenas are concerned, or really just most plants are concerned, they're pretty drought tolerant. That's more so when they're in the ground in a pot. I usually let them dry out to about 50% during the winter time. And when in active growth, I will water them when they're about I don't know, one to two inches dry down into the soil. Typical houseplant watering. These do need a potting mix that drains very well. They don't want their roots to ever be sitting in water and they don't want to be in a soil that's going to hold on to moisture for an extended period of time. It needs to drain and dry fairly quickly, but still have some organic materials in there to help make sure the plant grows and looks its best. I only fertilize during the active growing season, meaning spring through summer, maybe into early fall. And that's just something you would need to do maybe every other week. Really once a month would probably be fine with an all-purpose fertilizer or a slow-release fertilizer that's blended into the soil or amending it with some sort of compost would be fine too. These propagate very easily by cuttings. You just make your cut, <laughs> stick the cut in into some moist soil and keep it moist. Generally, they'll take root fairly easily. Cenas are toxic, so it's a good idea to keep these plants away from curious mouths. They will chew on them, especially cats. Cats love, 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 love to chew on those grassy blades, especially on the marginatas. Like I said, pretty easy to care for. The amount of water you give them is going to depend on the kind of light that these have. So if you have these in a room that doesn't get a lot of light, then they'll need less water. If you have them in a really bright, sunny room, especially a room that's warm, maybe you have an atrium, something of the sorts, then they're going to need water more regularly. During the winter time, I don't really I mean, I water mine, but it's more just an afterthought when I'm watering other plants. I don't think I've ever watered any of my Dracaenas during the winter with the intent of making sure that they're watered. Where I keep them during the winter time, they don't get a ton of light. These go in my garage on a side where there's a lot of larger plants, so they get shaded pretty heavily. So with that being said, they just don't need a lot of water when they're not getting a ton of light. The color on this does darken immensely when it's not getting a ton of sunlight. I don't know if it has any of its old growth on it from winter time. Doesn't look like it does, or otherwise I would show that to you. The more light, like I mentioned, the more color and variegation that you see in here. So I think the general rule of thumb there is to let that pot dry out about 50% during the winter time if they're not getting a lot of light. If they're getting a lot of light and a lot of warmth, I'm pretty sure I already settled this. Water they get them again. I'm sorry, my puppy came out and just totally threw me off from everything I was saying. During the spring and summer, when I have these outside and they're getting lots and lots of sunlight, I water them just the same as I do with everything else. I have them up on drip, so they get watered every single day and I hand water them on top of that. Just because they're drought tolerant doesn't mean they have to grow in those conditions, but it's a warning sign to make sure you know to not overwater them or let them sit in water. That being said, even though these are reputed to be a slow to moderately fast grower, I found that if they actually get watered, <laughs> like on a regular basis and have nice soil, these will go fairly quickly, like actually pretty fast. For example, this one right here, this was roughly 18 inches tall when I got it, and that was only two years ago, and it's over five feet tall now. So I, I wouldn't consider that to be a slow grower. But if they're staying inside all year and not getting that warmth and light, then they're going to grow more moderately. I guess I can see where they get the reputation of being a slow grower if they never come outside. Heck, even this one right here, I got this last summer and it was, it was really small. Let's go ahead and pull this out so you have a better look at the entire plant. So now that's about three feet tall. When I picked this up from the nursery, like I said, last summer, it was just about up to here. So that's, I mean, that's a lot of growth <laughs> considering it doesn't get much done to it during the winter time. So most of this growth is what happened at the end of last summer and then spring through now. And now is late September. These are awesome plants. They're fantastic for beginners or maybe you just want to plant around but you don't want to have to fuss with it all that much. This would be a good plant for you or for those people. Good gift plant too. They're prone to the typical houseplant things, spider mites, mealybugs, 
aphids, all those things. You just take them, wash them off with some water and then hit them with some neem. That's pretty much all you need to do with them. The main question that I usually encounter with people when it comes to their marginatas has to do with the browning tips, the ends of those leaves getting little brown spots on them. It can happen from the air being too dry. Maybe there's a draft blowing on the plant where it's not being watered quite enough. Even though these don't need a humid environment, they do grow very well in them. So that's something to consider. It also can be the result of buildups from uh, fluoride in your potting soil, that which would come from your tap water or excessive salts. That's really common with Dracaena of all types. All types of Dracaenas, if you're having tons and tons of browning tips, and lots of discoloration sometimes in the fronds and some wilty fronds that tend to be kind of bent and crooked just that you know the ones that just don't look right sometimes that's because of the tap water there's not a lot you can do about that other than water them with a bottled water or get a water filter like the kind you install under the sink to help filter out some of the stuff that's in the water or I mean, some people even just use like the Brita filters sometimes that's all it takes that's gonna depend on where you live and what's going on in your water. I've always watered mine with tap and never had a problem. I don't have fluoride in my water though. It seems to be that they're more sensitive to fluoride than they are to the chlorine. If those brown tips are bothering you. You can go ahead and cut them off. Just know that wherever you make that cut, it's also still going to leave a brown line where that callus is over. So it's really just a matter of preference as to what you prefer to have appearance wise. I think the brown tips, as long as they aren't too dramatic, it's not really that big of a deal. And as with all house plants, wanna watch out for brown leaves. Usually means that they're too dry. Yellow leaves usually means that they're too wet, especially if that's starting from the bottom. If that's too much moisture, if it starts to happen rapidly, check that soil, see if it's sopping wet or even just moist. And if it's moist, then it's been a long time since you've watered and that, that's too much water. They need to pull the plant out, get that soil out, repot it into something that drains better and back off on the watering. Just, you know, take a few steps back. If you're a heavy-handed waterer, this one could be a problem for you. Or go ahead and do your thing and just make sure that you put it in a potty mix that drains really, really fast and you can just water it to your heart's content. Not really. Give them a break, let them drop in between waterings, and that's basically it. There isn't much else to say with these because they're so easy to grow. Oh, propagation. Okay. Ha. Huh. Well, I'm not really looking to cut or propagate any of mine right now, but here's the thing about these plants. They're monopodial. So the Dracaenas, these are monopodial plants. Monopodial meaning that all their growth comes from one main stem, comes up and goes out the sides there. So wherever you cut this to prune it, that's it. No more growth is going to come up vertically out of that main stem. However, if I were to take my pruners and clip this right here, that will be the end of all the growth up there, but it will put out little babies along the sides of the trunk and those will come up and grow up and out. So eventually your Dracaena will get to a point where maybe it's too high for your ceilings. I'm not this one keep going for a few years, but this is this would be a good size, I think, for most people to make their cut. Wherever you make that first cut is where you're determining where you want that main part of their trunk to start forming or to start branching out. With this one, I would probably make my cut right around here. And that means that that's where I'm going to decide that I don't want this plant to continue growing up any further from that main stem. That's where I've decided that that's where I want the rest of the growth to come up and branch out from, from that point on. Generally when indoors, people do that for these when their trunk is about, I don't know, usually between three to five feet high somewhere in there because you want to accommodate so that the new branches can come up and grow up too. So if you have an eight foot ceiling, you don't want to cut it at six or seven feet. So it's not going to leave much space for the offshoots to go up and they'll, they'll be hitting the ceiling after that. The reason I'm talking about this when I was just mentioning propagation is because wherever you make those cuts. So if I were to cut this right in here, then I could take this entire big part up top and just stick it right back into that soil. They'll get rooted and start going. If you're more wary with propagation, which is fine, so nothing wrong with being cautious and taking things more carefully than that, then you can put them into a pot with a moist potty mix, one that holds onto some moisture and just stick it down in there. Maybe use some rooting hormone, dip the end in there. They'll take root and get going. Don't let it dry out for too terribly long. Marginatas are very easy to propagate. So when it's time to start making those cuttings, you can have a lot of fun with them. I usually though, just stick them back down into the bottom of the pot. But if you wanna make more, you have that option too. There are actually a lot of different ways that you can propagate these. You can go ahead and cut them into about three inch sections, lay them on their side on top of the potting mix. They'll usually root out from there, or you can put those down vertically into the soil and keep them covered with a bag, something like that to keep the humidity in. That'll usually help if you're doing this indoors and things are more dry. When it's time to propagate mine, I'll go ahead and make some cuts on it and be sure to film the process and do it in a way better than just 
jabbing the sticks down into the soil. I'll do it the way we probably should be doing it. If the leaves that are growing up the stem are bothering you, you can remove them. You can just pull them by hand. Do it gently, but usually they'll snap right off. Or you can use a pair of scissors and cut them close to the main stem. Let them dry out, and then you can pull that nub off in a few weeks. That little bit that's left on there should just pop right off. The only thing to note there is it's usually a good idea to make sure to leave at least, I'd say, probably a good four inches of leaves towards the crown, the very top of the plant where all the growth is coming out of. If you go too high up there, sometimes that top will get loose and pop right off. You don't want that to happen. All right, that's going to do it, though. I hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions are always appreciated. It's how we all grow and learn together. If you have anything to add, please let us all know. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.